So the best path is not necessarily the straightest. What is your zero? What does zero mean? Nobody starts completely from zero. And where is one? If you go on a very narrow, narrow tunnel vision, you may find that one, you get there, and you get bored after a while. Or perhaps you lose your steam. Or even it's a dead end, and you need to reinvent yourself. What I've discovered in my life is that if you, wherever you're starting from, you make the broadest base of experience, meeting people, traveling, discovering, reading, exploring, you will have a foundation that's going to make it possible for you to build, to discover, to grow, to understand, and to take new pathways. So, oop, how did this little girl go to that big girl? For me to have planned a career 45 years ago when I came to India, to stay in India as a dancer would have been totally insane, something I would never recommend to anyone. And yet I've had a fantastic life, and it's definitely a one. I'm not only of non-Indian origin doing classical dance, but I'm known primarily as an interpreter of cultural heritage and tradition through the Abhinaya. And then along the way, another one is that I loved Chow and became the first woman soloist of Meyerbunch Chow, and then was the first person to introduce it in North America at a dance conference in Hawaii for dance scholars. All of these things are not something I would have planned, and I'm going to take you back to the beginning. Where do I come from? Because one thing that's very important is that you have to know who you are. And that way, you can expand the world is yours. We need to have cultural fluidity, just like you have language fluidity. But you have to explore everything. And as you do, you understand yourself more. So that way, you have the best of everything. So over here, this is me with my mother. And this is my mother with her mother. Now, my grandmother when she was young, looked probably, I think everyone here might have someone in their family who looks like that. But this is actually Lithuania. And this brother, who looks another nationality, but they're all one family, he uh, went to South America. This one was exiled to Novo Sibirsk. And this one was killed by Hitler. And this is my grandfather. Fortunately, my grandmother never listened to her mother who said, don't marry him, he's short, you'll have short children. Since she married him, they lived and came to America. One of the main things I learned when I was a little girl, that's me, is that every year you think you're busy, but the truth is next year you're gonna be busier. Wherever you are in your life, you should try to do more. So when I was this age, I was not only doing dancing, I took brownies, which is like girl guides. I'm not the type, but I did three weeks. It was a good experience. I did theater. I did book clubs. I even took a class in cartooning, and I have no skill as a cartoonist. But it's something that is part of my repertoire, something that's there. Our family was active in politics. When I was 11, I was picketing a chain store that segregated in the South. And as I continued doing things, this is me in high school, I actually decided that I really could not be a dancer because dancing was too demanding of your time. If you're dancing, you've got to rehearse, you've got to practice, you've got to be in form, and it won't leave time for all of the other things that I wanted to do. I didn't stop dancing. I just kept doing everything. When I was 15, I went to the first March on Washington against the Vietnam War without my mother's permission. And uh, they said they would think of a suitable punishment, but they never did. Then I had gone to a very amazing high school. It was, I had 30 different majors curriculum. So I was in science and arts. I had to do chemistry, biology, physics, 
and uh, trigonometry, but I also did sculpture, history of Western thought, theater, radio speech, and dance, and so many things, journalism. So that when I went to university, I talked my way into the Honors College stating that if my SAT scores were too low in the sciences, I already knew that wasn't for me, and I was high enough in the humanities they should let me in. Talked my way in, and after that, I somehow, I don't know how I thought of this, but I said, what I want to do, I can't do in one college, because I'm interested in arts, I'm interested in humanities, I want to learn more about Asia. And Arts of Asia is in art and architecture, and ethnomusicology is in the music school. So I petitioned the Board of Governors to let me create my own degree program. It's fantastic. If I had a stupid class or teacher, it was no longer part of my major. Fantastic. And along the way, um, I was very involved in politics. I here, I applied for Miss Teenage Detroit uh, because $10,000 scholarship, maybe I could have gone to Radcliffe. But of course, the winner was a, a blonde girl who had a fire baton. So that, you know, is that a zero, is that a plus? Great experience. One of the judges actually quit because of it. I went to Mississippi doing my puppetry. Uh, my my uh, sister was in civil rights, and I went down and below poverty line children that had a Head Start program, nursery. And I taught paper bag puppets to teachers and parents. I realized that you have to travel. The next year, I didn't want to go to Mississippi. I said, I want to go to Mexico. My mother always said, when you want to do something, write me an essay. Justify it. So I did. And I went to Mexico with my sister. Then, when I was in college, I was the first freshman ever elected to student government. And, as you can see, freshman woman's hours organizer. I convinced the Board of Governors to get rid of curfew for girls. I said, look, a boy can have a girl out and not let her know the correct time, and then she can't go back late because the punishment is too steep. Girls should be able to come home whenever they need to come home. After, <laughs> and after that, I was always home on time. I mean, it wasn't an issue. You know, I just thought we had, ought to have the right. Now, I traveled to Europe during my two summers uh, after my freshman, sophomore year. And it was fantastic, great. And I said, I'm, go back whenever reason. No more tourists. We had Indian family friends. When I grew up, I had this amazing exposure to dance, music, theater, film from all over the world. Every month, I went to at least one or two concerts. Detroit is the home of the labor movement, which meant there were all ethnic communities. I saw Sitajit Rai's Panther Panchali when I was the age of the girl Durga, so I could identify on a very human level. I wanted to go to India. I didn't want to go as a tourist. So what happened was, I had the chance to learn Manipuri. This is Tagore-style Manipuri. And I was dancing in college. And I thought, OK, I'll go to India and I'll continue Manipuri. That'll be an entree. I definitely didn't plan on being a classical Indian dancer. But I thought a year in India studying the dance would be useful for whatever I wound up doing. Again, a zero was that I was supposed to go in 72, and it was right after the Bangladesh War. Uh, Nixon was our president. He was just about as bad as Trump, maybe even worse. <laughs> and so the Indian government said, no more free ticket for students and scholars. We're making criteria you have to follow. That took them time. I was told that at any point, they could make a decision, and I could be an Indian two weeks. That took one year. So I felt like I was in a Kafka novel. But in that year, I turned that zero, those lemons, into lemonade by deciding, OK, I'll finish my master's degree. I taught as a teaching fellow. Because I finished, I didn't have to rush back after my, uh, my Fulbright. I extended it for another year. By that time, when you're doing things that you love, 
and you're not thinking about what's the purpose of it, you just put one foot in front of the other. And then I realized, if I go back to America after two years, going in circles, din din da kita din da, I'm going to be between the bride's pageant and the bhangra, and that's it, two years. Let me stay a little longer. Maybe I can do a little more. Okay. I go back to America for the summer, teach as a guest lecturer at my university, get married, do the opposite of what Indians do, married my husband, brought him back, American, to India. One of the reasons, one, by not marrying an Indian, everyone knows that I'm here because of me. I'm here because of what I wanted to do, you know? If I had done everything I had, and unfortunately, if I had a wonderful husband who was Indian, everyone would say, oh, well, you know, time passed. She's got to do some things, and she's here. So I came to India. This was the kind of modern dance, very lyrical. It's suited with the Manipuri. I came, and I love Manipuri. Manipuri, to me, is my main style. I would only be doing Manipuri if the ones that I achieved in Manipuri were sustainable. But everything depends on your teachers. My teacher taught me wonderfully, but he wasn't encouraging. He would never play for my program. He wouldn't let me t use the musicians. When I was in Manipur, he wouldn't introduce me to anyone. So I learned from him. He was great. This is the pre-Vaishnavite Laiharoba. This is Geet Govinda. These are the male forms. When I learned Kartal Cholam and performed it at the academy in Manipur, they said, wow, maybe we should start teaching this to the girls, because she does it right. It was wonderful. I loved it. But one thing was that I saw a dance, which you all know, Chow, wasn't known. Oh, before that, I had to pass some free time. So this is the very first, that's a one, first musical done in Delhi, in India, uh, Oliver. And I choreographed that. I wasn't that keen on, on musicals, frankly. I was more high art. But I had time. And uh, I had seen it on the plane coming to India, so I thought it was prophetic. Now, this is, this is Chow, and this is modern dance. So I think you can see from the picture. 17 years of ballet and modern dance. When I saw Chow, even though I didn't want to be a dance collector, I said, well, let me just do a little bit. I saw uh, Western theater people coming and learning Chow for like two weeks and thinking they were the top of the hit parade. And actors don't learn as quickly as dancers. So I continued. And you can see the similarity, not in the import, not in the genre, but at least in the training. And I love chow. And when someone says giving up, oh, you have to do one thing or another, that's like telling a mother, give up your children, you know, or choose one. They're totally different. I love chow. This is my blessed guru, Guru Krishna Chandra Nayak from Baripada, reminded me of my grandfather. This is my daughter. And when he was very old, he was in tears. OK, here's a zero, because Um, because when he wanted me to show his technique at an international festival, um, his patron, who uh, ran the institution where he was teaching in Delhi, said, no, you have to have the artist of my choice. He said, fine, let him dance. He, you want to show him off. But to show the technique properly, let Sharon do it. And actually, on his deathbed, he was crying about that. But I feel a responsibility to the art because of that. Padma Vibhushan Guru Kailacharan Mahapatra. He taught a workshop at the place I was studying Manipuri in Delhi. It looked great. Nice camaraderie. I was learning alone. And the second year, when I was about to leave, I thought forever, he came again for a workshop. I said, OK, I'll just take a workshop just academically to understand something about the style. And I told my Manipuri guru, any effect, I'll stop. Well, he was wonderful. He was generous. 
In two weeks, he had me help teach the beginners. He said I learned faster than anybody he'd ever taught because I had such a background. And he encouraged me. And so because of him only, he said, you record the music, I'll help. You get the costume made, I'll help. And as it turned out, after about five years of learning Odyssey, that actually everyone knows that foreigners are hardworking and they're going to get the athletic part of it. But it turned out that dramatic expression was my forte. Now, here I am in class. And I decided after five years, wait a minute, I better go back to America and see what I can do with this. So it's not just an indulgence. And I realized that if I couldn't do something there, what was the point? And of course, everybody knew that foreigners doing Indian dance were just students. Nobody took them seriously, really. And, uh, or they were hippies or worse. So it wasn't a very viable career. Back in America, I wound up doing 250 school programs. This is a program I carried my own stage. I had a map with the dancers. I did Manipuri and Odissi. And when I had done 250 programs, this is a time when America had money for culture and cross-cultural education in the arts. They don't anymore. But this was in Los Angeles. So when I'd worn out my costumes, I said, I will come back. And then the thing is, the more you do by not thinking, by just taking one step, the farther you will get. Sometimes people say, wow, you have a lot of courage. I would say, no, 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 no. No courage. Naivete will get you much farther than courage. People with experience will tell you the things you want to do are impossible. But when you're young, you don't know that. And you just do it. And once you've smashed through walls, other people are complaining because they bang on the door. And there wasn't even a door for you. But you smash through it, and then you look back. And then that's what happens. Okay. So definitely, everything that you do, nothing is lost. You keep going forward, you will get to new places. I came back to India, and I came to Saraikula. Why did I want to learn mask dance? Because I used to do a lot of puppetry, and it was a way of connecting. And because also I had danced, I had danced in the Festival of Masks in LA, and I thought, why not learn a mask dance? It was very challenging. Now, when I was here dancing first, I came to Saraikula pregnant. I had decided that the only way I could afford to have a child was if I was pregnant while I was on a fellowship. So I planned it. I danced in Indonesia, arrived in India, danced, studied, and then when I'm done, I'm traveling around with this little girl. Now, you can just imagine when people saw her here in Jharkhand, in Meyerbunge, they all thought, oh my god, what's wrong with that poor child? She's so ugly. She's got no hair. She's got no color. But she had a fantastic childhood and fortunately uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Now, something interesting happened at the 15-year mark. Here I am with my guru, Kelu Babu, the great musician, Pandit uh, Bhubaneshwar Mishra, his son, Ratikant, who leads the company, singer Rakamanti. Here we are in Disneyland. I did 22 shows in the US. The way I could take my musicians was, again, one of these things. You never can get anything by just asking or just trying. See, another, or maybe that's for me. Because another one is that, another one is that, India, as we know, it's hierarchical, it's feudal. I am not part of any community, no jati, no batchmates, no brothers, uncles, fathers, husbands, sugar daddies. Whatever I got was on merit. And yet I got support. And because of that, I danced there. Other dancers in America who danced with me went on to great careers while I was here. I performed with my teacher. I had the chance to play myself to inspire a dancer, that's another one. Great experiences, friends with artists like Ravi Shankar. I also, another one, 
was changing the attitude of dance of uh, the public in Delhi that foreigners could be artists by presenting six years of festivals. And the experiences, the awards, the opportunities, teaching. This is my student of 16 years who now will move the tradition forward and doing things for everyone from police, South Africa. Um, this is with the vice president. All of these marvelous experiences are because you have to experience everything. Everything prepares you for the next thing. I've given up my puppetry, but I have so much else. My Manipuri guru didn't encourage me, but my Odissi guru did. And that's a good thing, because Manipuri is not the most popular style, no matter how much I love it. And everything has led me to being with my mother, who's going to be 101 in two weeks, and my daughter, and a great life. Thank you. <laughs>